All right, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, the AI side hustle tier list. I know you marked this event on your calendars. I know you were all asking for it in the comments section, and here it is. I'm gonna be going over the best AI related side hustles from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And if you appreciate me doing these types of videos, go ahead and let me know by cheersing at that like button. And let's jump into it with number one on the list, which is going to be photo colorization. So I think you guys know what this is. You're basically restoring old vintage photos. And in some cases, not only are you restoring them, but you're also colorizing them. And this can actually be done pretty well with AI, believe it or not. So here are some examples. I'll put them up on the screen. You can see that this is much clearer and you can actually tell what the guy looks like versus the old one you can barely see what he looks like at all and yeah a lot of people are making money doing this online right now so not gonna lie it is getting a bit saturated because a lot of different people are doing it but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and put this one into b tier and by the way i just want to let you know that i'm going to be doing a free training on how to grow and monetize your youtube channel and it's going to be on tuesday at 9 p.m eastern time it'll be a live interactive zoom call with me where i can answer questions that you have about youtube and i'll also be revealing the five biggest secrets when it comes to growing and making money from YouTube. And this is what you can do to either add a couple thousand dollars a month to your income or even grow a full-time income purely from making content on YouTube. And when I started out on YouTube, I was working as a pharmacist full-time, but within a few months of starting, I was getting messages like this in my inbox. And all of a sudden I was adding thousands of dollars on top of my full-time job. Now, if you wanna do the same, make sure to join the live training because I'll also be giving away a free mini course only to the people who show up to it. It. This is not going to happen anywhere else. There will be no replays and there's limited seating. So make sure you sign up by clicking the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And I look forward to seeing you there. All right. Next one is overdubbing videos with other languages. Now, this is one that is actually getting more and more common. There's tools uh, such as Nova AI that actually really streamline this process and they make it more efficient. And you've seen people like Mr. Beast, for instance, who started a bunch of different channels in a bunch of different languages because he wanted to capture the entire world's market. And he's talked about how it's very important that you make sure that you have your videos um, for other people you know, and dub them in different languages so you can get a wider reach. Now, the truth is most people don't have enough money to hire an entire department for just dubbing all of their videos professionally. But what you can do, which is almost as good, is use AI to do it. And that's exactly what you can do with a lot of these free tools. And that's why there's a lot of people who want this type of service. And yeah, I'm seeing a ton of different people who are basically posting these types of gigs online and it's getting more and more popular. Also, uh, AI voices are getting more and more realistic. I've recently kind of like cloned my own voice and it's not perfect, but it's really, really close. And with certain sentences, you can't even tell the difference. It's actually pretty incredible. So yeah, overdubbing in other languages, I do think this is a huge opportunity right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. And by the way, guys, I've already gone over a lot of these in other videos in more detail. This video is not for going over these in detail. This is just me giving my opinion on them. Background removal, um, this is something where it used to actually be very difficult to precisely remove backgrounds. So I'll just give you guys an example. Back in the day, when I first started YouTube, like a few years ago, I had to pay this guy a lot of money, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars in order to meticulously go through and basically like look at my hair and, and, and meticulously go through and remove it from the background so that I could make really good thumbnails. And it was actually really expensive and it took a long time for him to do it. I think I paid like over $500 for a bunch of different photos. But recently they've been coming out with AI tools that make this much easier and you can get really high quality photos. Uh, uh, tools like removal.ai, remove.bg, and Canva have AI background removers. And it's getting so good that you actually almost can't even tell the difference between the AI background removal versus somebody doing it uh, very meticulously. And so there's a ton of these people who are offering these types of services and they're absolutely crushing with it. And a lot of the time it's not just removing the background. It might also be kind of replacing the background with something else, maybe putting a shadow behind it and that kind of thing. Maybe also touching it up a little bit. But yeah, these types of gigs are doing extremely well. I mean, this guy, you know, he's got 784 reviews and that means he's made at least $7,000 all the way up to 
nearly $100,000 just with one gig that he's doing on Fiverr, which is pretty incredible. And by the way, you can probably just hire other people to do this for you down the line. Another gig here, this guy's earned at least $5,000 from it. And a lot of the people who do the gigs don't leave reviews, so he's probably earned far, far more than what I'm talking about here. This guy's earned at least $25,000 for his services. Um, yeah, th these are really good. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail on this, but there's some opportunity here. I think there's some specialized types of background removal that are going to be better. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Next one is going to be watermark removal. This is basically where you have like a watermark on a video or a watermark on a photo or something like that. And you basically just try to remove it. And you can actually do this with the click of a button now. I pressed it, sir. I pressed the button. And there's a ton of different gigs on Fiverr that sell this service now. So yeah, watermark removal. Um, you can see like there's tons of gigs doing this. And these people are, you know, making thousands and thousands of dollars. This guy's made at least $4,600, probably a lot more than that. This guy's made at least $8,000, probably a lot more than that. So this one's pretty good as well. Um, a little bit potentially unethical. I mean, there, there might be some reasons, like legitimate reasons to remove watermarks. But usually when there's a watermark there's a reason that it's there and so yeah i'm not as big of a fan of this one so i'm gonna go ahead and put it into f tier although if you have a legitimate reason it could be good publishing children's books um this is actually a really really good one um i've been absolutely shocked how good this is now it could be children's books or it could also be coloring books and basically you use ai to create these different children's books or coloring books and they're relatively simple to make i mean you can use really simple language and you basically just want to make them in such a way where the child's entertained but they also maybe learn something and this person for instance uh created the book the wise little squirrel a tale of saving and investing <laughs> which is a great story for kids to hear about that's awesome and they made it available on amazon for 2.99 to 9.99 for a printed version and they immediately made a hundred bucks so it's basically like the first one they tried and they immediately made a hundred bucks so that's an example of a small time side hustle this kid made over a million dollars selling books that are created using chat gpt this person made their first sale with their first book uh, that they created using ChatGPT and using AI. And a bunch of these different books, you can kind of tell that they used AI to create these. And if they have over 3,000 reviews, that means that they made at least $39,000 from the book, at the very least, because again, most people don't actually leave reviews. So it's probably far, far more than that. And you can see like a lot of these books look kind of similar, right? It looks like they probably could have been created with AI. So this is actually a really good one to get into. Um, and additionally, uh, AI related coloring books are great as well. So I'm actually gonna put both of those into A tier. Next is going to be a face faceless YouTube channel, a faceless YouTube automation channel. This is what you hear about all the time, right? You, you don't have to show your face. You don't have to come out of your mom's basement. You don't have to grow as a human being. You can just make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month just by randomly uploading stuff and just hiring a team to make it for you. And you can just hire voiceover artists or use AI voiceover and just make tons of money by doing it. Uh, all you have to do is buy our $5,000 uh, high ticket coaching program, right? Holy moly, guys. Like, listen, I love YouTube. I think YouTube is an incredible opportunity, but YouTube is some work, right? It's definitely some work to grow on YouTube. The best way to grow on YouTube is a personal brand, okay? Showing your actual face. That's why people watch YouTube. Think about it, guys. Why would people watch YouTube versus just turning on the TV, you know, watching a super highly produced show or watching some sort of a channel that has a bunch of animations and stuff, again, super highly produced. Why would they watch YouTube instead of that? Because they wanna hear the opinions of other human beings, right? They don't want like some automated BS. And you know, don't get me wrong. I, I do have a few friends who have a bunch of faceless channels and automated channels and they do pretty well. You know, I've got one friend, for instance, who makes like, $3,000 a month from like 10 different channels. So he's making $30,000 a month. But the crazy thing is, is I'm making about $300,000 a month from one channel. So it's just not even comparable. Like a personal brand is way better. And he has to hire a bunch of people and he has to like do all this crap in order to maintain his channel. Whereas my channel is pretty simple to maintain. Now I started a second business. So of course I'm hiring other people for the second business um, because I like pain and uh, you know, I, I just like pushing myself. But yeah, my main channel is pretty much automated. The only thing I have to do is record the videos. So I'm not a fan of this YouTube automation. I'm not a fan of this faceless channel thing. 
Um, I, I think it just teaches people the wrong lesson and it plays to people's natural insecurities. Like, oh, I don't wanna show my face. Oh, I don't wanna go out of my mom's basement. Like, no, that's what YouTube is all about is putting yourself out there and showing your face, guys. And that's gonna make it 10 times easier for you to grow. And YouTube is an incredible opportunity. I think it's the best social media platform, but faceless YouTube channels are not the way, guys. This one goes into F tier. Uh, mostly just because it annoys me so much. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn how to actually start a successful YouTube channel, which by the way, you can utilize a lot of these AI related tools to help you to make the content better and also make your workflow a lot more efficient. But if you want to know how to actually start a successful YouTube channel, I do have some free training, which I'll put down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below, and you can check it out. Um, also, there is an option to book a call with me. I do coach several people per month. I have to keep it very small because I work very closely with those people on how to grow and make money from their YouTube channel. I have a bunch of people I've gotten results for. Some of my best students are actually doing 10 million plus dollars a year on YouTube. So that's something you can check out as well. But again, we're very picky about who we accept into the coaching program just because we can only work with a limited amount of people. But yeah, that'll be down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So check it out. Next is going to be blogging and using AI for blogging. Now, this is one where I was pretty skeptical about it at first, and I'm still somewhat skeptical about it. But honestly, I, I'm friends with a lot of different SEOs and people who do blogs. And the truth is like a lot of blogs out there are heavily utilizing AI. If they're not outright writing their articles with AI, their writers are heavily utilizing AI to do the blogging and it's making their content better. Now, if you have the AI just outright write stuff on your blog and then you post it, it's not going to be that great. But one friend I have, for instance, um, had a network of different blogs, and then he basically used AI to translate that into a ton of different languages. And he started a bunch of other blogs that are basically the same blog, but in a bunch of different languages. And that did extremely well for him. So he developed kind of a process for how to do that. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities when it comes to AI and blogging. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into S tier, although I will say that um, there's a very good chance Google cracks down on it. There's also a very good chance that it's not as good in the future once that becomes a little bit saturated and people expect a higher level of content output. There's a good chance it's not gonna be as good, but right now it is S tier. Next is gonna be freelance content writing. This is pretty closely related to blogging because um, a lot of the time you are gonna get hired for blogging. And utilizing AI for this uh, is extremely, uh, helpful, you know, um, but it can take a significant amount of the work off your plate and it can help you write stuff a lot faster. So for instance, I have a friend who actually writes VSLs for people for a living and he's able to write about 10 times more VSLs utilizing AI, utilizing prompts that he came up with on AI. And these VSLs work, right? So video sales letters, he actually runs these on paid ads. Like these VSLs actually work. So AI is extremely useful. Now, does there have to be some human input? Yes, there always has to be some human input. Um, but yeah, this stuff is, um, it, it's really powerful and it's definitely streamlined the process. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put freelance content writing also in S tier. Next is gonna be copywriting services. Now, this is where there's certain types of copywriting that you can utilize AI with, but honestly, I still think that human copywriters are significantly better than AI at this point. There are a few exceptions. I, you know, I was just talking about VSLs. VSLs are copy, but that's more of the structure of the VSL, and it basically just fills in the structure of it. And he also finds sort of template VSLs that are already really good in order to do that. Um, and it's also like a very detailed process that he goes through with his um, his writing. So I've just seen like copywriting in general is not very good when it comes from AI. I'm sure there's probably some copywriters out there that are uh, doing a lot better job with it. But yeah, just generally speaking, copywriting is not as good with AI. And I can almost always recognize when they are doing AI copy. So I'm gonna put this into B tier. Next is going to be selling digital art. So this is where you create digital art using something like Midjourney or Dolly, and you make it into something like an NFT or something that you could sell on Etsy, maybe a printable, for instance, that you could put up on your wall, and then you do print on demand on Etsy. So you make a design, put it on Etsy, they like it, and then they buy it, and then Etsy would go ahead and print it and then deliver it to them, right? So something like this um, can be really good Definitely a lot of opportunities out there for this. There's a lot of different AI generated stuff that is doing great. So for instance, this AI generated portrait uh, sold for about $430,000. But to be honest, there's a lot of sketchy stuff that goes on in, in the art industry. A lot of the time it's used for like laundering money and just all kinds of really sketchy 
things. So, you know, there might be something goofy going on there with that. It looks kind of goofy. Goofy. But yeah, like digital art for s storybooks, children's illustrations. Th that's something we kind of already went over. There's a lot of different uses for selling digital art and AI can make it a lot easier or in some cases just do most of the work for you, if not all of the work. So definitely a good opportunity here. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying me just giving my opinion on these different opportunities, uh, go ahead and share this with a friend who would maybe benefit from seeing it as well. Another one is creating an e-commerce store. So this one's a little bit related to the last one, um, but it's specifically for physical products. So like I said before, there's a lot of different physical products you can make. You could create uh, printables, you could do uh, t-shirts, you could do mugs, like all kinds of different ways that you could create some sort of design using AI and then put it on a physical product. So definitely a lot of opportunities here. One thing I am extremely bullish on in the future is going to be 3D printing when that is mixed with AI. 3D printing and print on demand for e-commerce products is going to be a massive market because let me just give you a few little use cases for this. And honestly, there's like hundreds of other use cases, but there's a ton of people out there that want really good Halloween costumes, right? But the problem with Halloween costumes is you go to the store and most of them suck. And so people end up making their own Halloween costumes if they want to make it good. But what if you could just design an ha a Halloween costume online, heavily utilizing AI for it, and then measure your own dimensions, enter them in online somewhere, and then it just 3D prints the Halloween costume for you. Or maybe you're into cosplay. Same thing with cosplay. If you're into like anime and manga and that kind of thing. Just think of how massive that market is going to be because that I guarantee you that's going to happen in the next five years. It's just a matter of time. And there's going to be a ton of people out there that are going to be designing awesome uh, different types of costumes. And all you have to do is you just have to input your dimensions and it's going to 3D print it perfectly for you to fit you perfectly, right? So unbelievable amount of opportunity coming down the line when it comes to e-commerce and physical products. It's not quite there yet. Uh, there's probably people that are out there working on this as I'm speaking, and it's not quite there yet, but it's going to be here within the next five years, 100%. So this is this could be like a billion dollar idea, guys. And if not a billion dollar idea making it yourself, there's probably going to be platforms that allow you to make it and then market it and sell it to people, right? So this is going to be huge. Um, this is something where if I had enough time, I'd probably go for it because I think it's such a great idea. But yeah, this one is going to go into S tier. Next is going to be making pitch decks. So Pitch decks are basically where you present some sort of offer to somebody. Usually it's either an investor or another business. And you basically tell them about what your business idea is or what your uh, offer is to them. And there's this guy right here who's been making $3,000 a week, basically creating pitch decks for people. And he utilizes ChatGPT to do it. And these are pitch decks for startups. Now, this is something that is a skill that you have to get really good at. There are certain things that people are going to look for in pitch decks. So you do have to know how to make a good pitch deck. But you can heavily utilize uh, tools like ChatGPT to do this. And yeah, this is a really good one, especially if you're someone who's already familiar with business and already familiar with what startups want. Um, this is really good. So some tools you would use would be ChatGPT as well as Tome. And like I said, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but I'm going to give this one an A tier rating. Next is going to be voiceover impressions. Now, I've mentioned this before, but the voiceovers are getting better and better. There's a lot of different tools like voice.ai that basically mimic different uh, famous personalities. And there's tons of people making tons of money with voiceovers online. And they're honestly just getting better and better and more realistic. So uh, there are so many applications to this. It's absolutely ridiculous. But with that being said, most voiceover AI voiceovers are not quite there yet, but they're close. They're super close to being there. So this one is really good. Um, I think it's going to be even better in the next few years, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and give it a B tier rating. Next is going to be podcast show notes. So this is basically where you take a podcast, um, you analyze it using AI, and it automatically creates show notes for the podcast. So I use something very similar to this. I basically use Fathom and Fathom is what basically just takes notes on all the meetings that I have in my company or different calls that I have with people. And then it basically just makes a great little summary of the call, the things that we discussed. It gives timestamps to the different uh, times that we discuss things. So it's easier to kind of like go back and, and look at the exact time that we discussed it. It's really useful. And um, this is the type of thing where it's 
it's also pretty good for things like SEO. So if you're, you know, making your podcast and you're putting them on YouTube, it's actually really good if you have SEO optimized description because it's going to get a lot more views because people that are searching for that type of thing are going to end up clicking on your video. And so yeah, podcast show notes um, or just SEO in general, really good opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and give that one a C tier ranking. Next is going to be creating and selling online courses. So this would be very low ticket online courses. So you wouldn't be able to charge very much for these. But believe it or not, you can actually create online courses using AI. And so just to give you an example, um, this guy right here made $10,000 a month with AI powered courses. And he basically started selling them on Udemy. And these are typically very low ticket courses, maybe 10 dollars up to like 30 dollars something along those lines but there are a lot of topics that people search all the time on udemy and they just want kind of a structured course that's relatively easy and straightforward to go through and nobody's making courses on them and so even though an ai course probably isn't the best thing it could teach them the basics and just have a good structure on how to go through learning the skill so this is actually not a terrible way of doing things of course like i said you, you're not going to be able to sell it for a lot because it is an ai course uh, but with that being said i'm going to go ahead ahead and give this one a C tier ranking. Next is going to be resume writing. And there's a really good tool called resi.ai. Now, is it going to be able to write your entire resume for you? No, but there's this 35 year old teacher that brought in 2 million from his resume writing side hustle. And I bet you uh, he was probably heavily utilizing uh, some of these tools, or at least now he is if he wasn't using them back then. And resi.ai basically allows you to kind of tailor your resume to the exact job they're going for the exact job description that they're applying for, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really useful. And not only is there a lot of opportunity for resume writing services, but there's also a lot of opportunity for job application services. So actually applying to jobs for people. So you can also use Resi AI for something like that too. So yeah, this one's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a B tier status. Next is going to be stock images. Um, I think everybody knows what this is AI to create stock images, pretty good opportunity. Overall, there's a lot of images out there that people search for that there just isn't enough photos available. Some websites allow AI stock images, some don't. Adobe AI or Adobe stock does allow stock images, which is great. And this one's really good. I'm going to give it a B tier status, but the next one on the list is going to be stock videos. Now that is coming down the line. AI is getting better and better at creating videos. And that is going to be so much better than the stock images because I can't tell you how many times I've looked for a particular type of video that conveys an emotion or, or conveys something that I'm trying to say in my YouTube videos, and I haven't been able to find it. And so stock videos are going to be even more useful than stock images. And it's going to be incredible. The use cases are just insane. YouTube, uh, marketing purposes for paid ads, just all kinds of different use cases. Uh, stock videos, that's going to go in S tier. Prompt engineering is next. So this is basically where you create prompts to help different companies streamline their operations and just optimize things and do things faster and more efficiently and better. And this is a really good opportunity. So there's people that are creating prompt engineering agencies. There's people that are doing prompt engineering as freelancers. There's people that are getting hired for full-time jobs as prompt engineers as well. Uh, there's also websites out there that will allow you to post certain prompts and then you can sell them for like $5 or something. And then thousands of people end up buying them so you can make passive income that way. And yeah, having a good prompt versus having a bad prompt. I mean, there's a huge difference because at the end of the day, AI is great, but it still falls under the universal rule of garbage in garbage out guy go right. If you put garbage into AI, you are going to get garbage out. So you have to put something good into AI. And the way you can put that good thing in is to have good prompts. And so prompt engineering is great. I'm going to go ahead and put it into a tier status. Next is going to be freelance coding. And believe it or not, ChatGPT is actually really, really good at coding. Now it is basic coding, right? So it is extremely basic, but if you know how to search different databases online, and then you know how to take those databases and plug them into chat GPT, you can do basic coding relatively well. And at a freelance level, if you're just, you know, solving problems for people at a freelance level, and they're just super basic problems for you, even if you have a pretty, you know, entry level understanding of coding, but they're pretty complicated for other people that don't understand it, you can still make a decent amount of money from freelance coding. And even if you're a more advanced coder, you can still heavily utilize chat GPT and some of these other tools to code faster and more efficiently. And here's a picture of somebody who basically used GPT four to code an entire game. So he basically made a game of snake and he used GTP four uh, to 
make the entire game, which is pretty incredible. So this is getting better and better every day. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things where it, it's incredible. I can't believe that it's this good, but it is. And it's probably going to be getting even better. So um, freelance coding, I'm going to put that one on A tier. Next is going to be AI graphic design. This is one that I'm a little bit less bullish on uh, just because I think it's going to get really oversaturated quickly. You know, this guy, for instance, is a 33 year old making $14,600 a month. He did start off in graphic design. But to be honest with you guys, this one is getting saturated so quickly. And it's it's really easy for someone from maybe like a third world country to just use these different tools and, and graphic design. I don't think this one's going to be as good in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Next is selling stickers. This one does fall under the physical product category. But this is one that's been super hot in the last few years. I think it's a l cooling down a little bit, but it's still relatively good. I'll go ahead and put it into C tier. Selling mugs on Etsy. This is another one that was really hot in the last few years. Not quite as good anymore. I'll put it into C tier as well. So yeah, guys, if you haven't checked it out, I did make a video on 10 of the easiest AI side hustles um, that are actually really good. And it did get, I think, a couple hundred thousand views. So it's doing pretty well. People really loved it. And you can check that out by clicking right here.